Hey, welcome to another innovation production. Today will be a quick video. Hopefully, I will solve an issue that some of you may be experiencing. Now, do you use an audio interface for music production in Windows? Typically, people use a door like Ableton, Avid Pro Tools, Cubase, or FL Studio. But do you run into problems trying to use your audio interface in other programs, such as watching videos, playing games, or even listening to music? One issue I had was trying to watch an Ableton tutorial on YouTube while trying to practice on Ableton. You see, no sound was coming out of YouTube. I'm sure many of you out there have experienced similar issues. You see, generic sound cards and audio interfaces are designed to excel at different things. I've owned many audio interfaces. Almost everyone had issues when used as the main audio device in Windows. I've also owned many sound cards. None of them had any issues in Windows except when trying to use them in music production. So what's the solution? Well, you want to be able to use both devices seamlessly and simultaneously. You would use your audio interface only for music production and use the sound card for everything else. But you may say, I only have one set of speakers. How can I get the input from both the audio interface and the sound card into my speakers? Well, one idea would be to use some studio monitors that have two types of inputs. But it's not recommended to use both inputs and use them at the same time with different sources as it messes with the audio signal. Besides, you can't select between or mix between the two sources. The second idea would be to use a dedicated studio monitor controller. Now, I find these to be a bit overkill and not worth it for something that performs a very simple task. And the cheaper ones like this one won't even allow you to mix your inputs. So here's my cheap solution. First, get a sound card that outputs clean sound. You may use your onboard sound card, but if it has a noisy output, you can consider getting this inexpensive Sound Blaster G3 USB sound card, which in my experience has been excellent. Now the sound card will be your main Windows audio device. Make sure in Windows audio settings, you've got this one selected. Next, you need a basic audio mixer that has at least two channels, like this Moki MAM X1 mixer. If you're interested, check out my review of the larger Moki MAM X2 mixer. Next, you need an audio interface with a monitor mix dial. In case you don't use this function, it allows you to mix between the inputs going into your audio interface, such as the microphone or line in source, and also the sound coming out of your computer. Now, if your audio interface is cheaper, it probably just has a direct monitor button rather than a mixer dial. You can still use this, but it means that you can only switch between the sources rather than hear both at the same time. So here's how I do it. First, you output from the sound card to the mixer. Next, you output from the mixer to the audio interface line inputs. Next, you output from your audio interface to your studio monitors, active speakers, or amplifier. Then you want to adjust the input and output of the mixer. And then you want to adjust the gain on your audio interface. Now, these settings you can pretty much set and forget. Finally, you want to adjust the monitor mix, depending on how much you want to hear from either the audio interface or the sound card or in other words, how much you want to hear from your door or from other Windows programs that are playing sound. Just a few final notes. Some of you may ask, why not place the sound card and the mixer in between your audio interface and the speakers? Why place them before the audio interface? Well, you see, your audio interface will generally have the best quality output in this setup, and you don't want to degrade the output signal by going through a cheap mixer like this one. Also, if you have the mixer over here before the speakers, you will need to adjust more than one dial in order to mix to the right levels that you want, as opposed to using the audio interface's monitor mix dial, which is just the one dial that you have to adjust. Now, a final thing to note is that if your audio interface only has two combo inputs, like this one, you will need to unplug one or both of them if you want to add like a microphone or another line in source. So yeah, hopefully this video has helped some of you out there. For more information and links of where to buy stuff, please check out the description below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.